large building with a minaret on top, two trees on the left, red, white, and ten on the right. See it? Bottom of the valley. The bottom of the valley you see in your road over there. There was the border. Now try to imagine. By looking at the neighborhood on the right, cross the valley on the left. And what you will find over there, small group of building. So that during the service, everything, which is tend to be a memorial for the armor brigade. There is a memorial for the paratroopers. There is a memorial for the infantry. Okay, this right? is the memorial Each one of those brigades or divisions, they have their own memorials, right? And show you kind of weapon they use during the old wars and uh, uh, dedicated for those people who died during Israel war only from the armor brigade. Uh, uh, armor brigade. Right here, you're standing here and look at the buildings and this building built by the British. Wow. This is the police station and they're kind of the police station which is built by the British this to protect British. Right, before, before, during the mandate, 1921 and 1940. Is this like the military? This is, it is, it was a military oh, building. Before we go Wait, over there so and I'll give you more uh, information later on after the short movie, I will try to show you right here what happens. This is the land goes around, squads around, which is indicated how those soldiers and where those soldiers uh, buried, uh, sorry, uh, fought and died. Right here you can see a stone that we are standing on it. This is brought from the Jordan Valley. We are going to be on the Jordan Valley, I think Thursday or Wednesday, this all the way up. The way up. This is the gra granite, the granite, Great. which is brought from Sinai, right? Also fought in Sinai. Dolomite, which is came from Lebanon, right? Which means recently. And this is the basalt stone, which is brought from the Golan Heights. From the where? Golan, Golan Heights. Heights. Let's go first to watch. Golan movie. Heights. Golan Heights. Adios. Do you know, have you been to them? And to control on four villages which was on this area. Arabs, Palestinians. Right? On those days they didn't call Palestinians, they called the Arabs. Right. The British promised many, many promises to the Arabs. At the start of the First World War. At the First World War, they said, if you cooperate with us and kick away the Ottoman, which is the Turks, we'll give you what's known as the Great Syria. And the Great Syria, which mean included Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. That's why Syria today, they said, we are the godfathers of this territory. And Israel, there is no any right to exist because this is our territory. That's what the Syrians said. The British couldn't keep their own promises, their own promises to the Arabs. We, they start, we, so, we start to support them, and later they uh, became much more pro-Arabs. They start to limit the numbers of people who came to the state of Israel that by publishing uh, what called the White Papers, right? The White Papers, uh, at that time it, uh, when it published, immigration to Israel became illegal. We tried to uh, reach Israel coast, sometimes successful, sometimes not, sometimes uh, took away to the, uh, to the British prisoners, sometimes back to Europe. And the ammunition uh, factory that we are going to also because of the British policy. So when they left in 1948, May 1948, the whole important places give to the Jews. That's why also. At the beginning we said, well, this is an empty, empty place. Nobody will stop us. We can attack this place with some armored vehicles, right? And we took it immediately. We didn't know that at night came a top brigade from Romana, which is not probably yesterday we saw, right? Settled down on this place. We brought the people to this place and we lost the battle. We defeated. Then five times we tried to attack this place. The bullets all that you saw over there, the holes, which is the shell holes and all, that's the five time attack, not very successful. Uh, we brought people straight from the ship. The immigrants who didn't know what which side the rifle uh, uh, shoot. Right? Brought them, but we call it the meat uh, part, to this place and die on the road. By the way, Ariel Sharon, our Prime Minister, he yes. was very bad uh, cancer on this place. He almost died on that place. Saved life by some. He decided to call this place the Tears Tower. The Tears Tower? The floor, make it a tower. Right? And you can see the shooting square holes from outside the original outside the original. Cool. They took the iron plate, which is used to arm tanks. Yes. Some of them are the original shells, which is those also the original shells. It's not made by the armies. 
Oh. Hey, Dan, you're going to stand in front. We're going to get a picture. I'm going to stand right here. Okay, listen, before, before we're going to take a picture, we're standing right now at the, uh, at the front of the tank. It's known as the, the best medium tank in the world. Called in Hebrew Merkava. In English, it means chariot. This is one of the tanks which is built following our experience in Israel. So it means, if you took the patterns on those other, this is a pattern over there. The one which is over there, it's a centurion behind it. Different cannons, different turrets, which is developed by the state of Israel. You can find that all the engines and any tanks will be at the back. Right? Follow the all Israel tanks which is used. Mom! You, yeah. you know what I did in Chicago once? I signed up for my kid, you know, as a dad for the field trip. I signed up for the field trip. All of a sudden, you know, I don't know if it's a camera. Don't go by the stroller, Asher. Come on. We're here at the ammunition factory. Oh, this is what we did last. This is the ammunition factory, and here's the story. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. Anything to say, Dad? I'm hungry, and Mom won't buy me. <laughs> yeah, she won't buy us a popsicle. I have something to say, but I don't think you'd want the rest of the world. Oh, to I think it. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> don't say. All I can say is you are one stud guy. So let's fix your hat. There you go. Oh, I know what you're talking. About. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Eventually, the company in this place is occupied in another way. It was used as, as laboratories for the Weizmann Institute. So they made the boat? They, did it right now. they work in a place that was in this place. I would not like to be one of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they didn't show it. You know, Shulia, what do you think they did? That might cost your life if you're involved. And so she said, listen, I want to be working there. When I came to Israel, I wanted to be part of the, uh, the rebuilding um, of Israel in here, and that's what I want to be. That's what I want to do. And so she said, they say, no, no regrets. So you're getting inside, you're staying inside, learning to switch people all the time. And she said, okay, that's what I want. And she did work there until the last day of operation here, until it was uh, shifted from here to Tel Aviv, and that happened July 48th. That's it, that's it. Yeah, you have to keep the secret? Yeah. Yeah. That's the That is how they opened it. Where they hide the bullets from? Where they hide the bullets from? Yes. Everybody did it. This is the clothesline. They go out and hang all the clothes. That is how they distract We are right above. You're and right that's above. And we're going to go now through the second entrance. That's the bakery. Where they meet. It is there. The oven. Oh, you right. trust me. To the bakery. See, the whole thing was here. The oven was pushed against that's, here. That's the, that's the cover. That's the oven. Uh, okay? And it would take two hours for an hour for the oven to move. We are walking down the stairway to the bottom. It would take more than an hour, my bad. That's very careful. Or the oven. I don't believe they made bullets here a secret. No yeah. I have to go really slow. Sorry, I have a camera on the other hand. We are at the bottom of the stairs. Here's one. Jeremy, I get it. No one has to say six times. Here's the machine. I have a question. That is one worker, maybe. Here are all the machines. This is all a secret. No one knows about this machine right now. 
No one knows. Look at all those bullets. This is the other empty. Is Can I see this? Is it recording? Yes. Wait, I want to see it. No, wait, I'm not done. They had to clean their shoes. I know. How can we go on? Look at this is the tanning This is the blue light where they had to go under. So they had to clean their shoes so no one would find out. Hi, Mom. You're on camera. Hi, Kyle. That is a draw machine, a stretching press. Look at all these things. This is what powered the machine. The family. Watch out, watch out, watch out. the biggest hog. Thank you. Well done. Oh. problems because of the Arabs and because of the Jews, uh, more from the Arabs than from the Jews. Um, basically, uh, there's an inner struggle between the Jews and the Arabs, there's a strike going on between 36 and 39 that the Arabs do, um, and so on and so forth. So in order to try and keep the, the order, they decided to not, let, to not let the Jews or the Arabs who have weapons or ammunition, um, unless... The Your family. Your, your friends, your family, yeah, people that are involved in that as well. Right, what else? What? No more shots, no more ammunition. Very true, this place might be shut down. So A, you risk yourself. B, you risk your community. And C, you, you risk the existence of, uh, of Jewish, state, Jewish right? state, yes, in the, in the future. Cause, and that's something to learn about Zionism, by the way. Zionism is not uh, an idea, it's a pragmatic, um, program. It's a pragmatic plan. It's something people do. If you don't have bullets, you don't have Zionism. And it's not because they like killing Arabs or, 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 or uh, nationalists that hate, full of hatred. It's because they simply understand that if you want to have, if you want to accomplish your goal of having a, a place for the Jews independently, establishing your whole, your whole life there, your uh, um, agricultural system and an educational system and industrial system and so on and so forth. If you want to have a good and just place for the Jews, where Jews can feel free to express their Judaism and all this great idea which we call in one word Zionism, unfortunately you need to have bullets because it's that simple. Um, and so they need to do it. Yes? Two short questions. Are these pictures real? Yes. Well, how do you define real? Well, I mean, they were from Vietnam. 
It was okay. that snake. At the time, it's forbidden to take pictures, right? But they, at one day, they realize that the place is about to be shut down. You're going to see this guy in a lot of the pictures, by the way. Yeah. They came here, they, all, they take pictures of, of the place. It's just at the end of the operation, 48, they realize that the place is going to be shifted to Tel Aviv. So a few of them come here and take pictures of us. They did to have uh, memories for that place. And was it, I guess I'm interested a little bit in like how they got selected, like was it considered a privilege to be able to do this? The first group that established this place is a group known to the Haganah already. This place belonged to the Haganah organization. Haganah organization, just to say, of the Haganah already in the, in, on the first place. But they, they were not chosen only in, as individuals, they were chosen as a group. And the people you need for something like that are dedicated enough, believe enough, uh, would like to do something like that out of choice because it's a choice, you know. No one, they were not soldiers, no one could force them to do that. Um, but still, uh, a, a strong enough group that will be able to uh, deal with something like that, a big enough group. Um, it was o almost natural, I must say, that the group of people that were about to establish a kibbutz would do it. Because Jen Ben Gurion once said that if you turn off all the lights in Israel at night and light only the lights in the kibbutzim, what you're going to get is the map of the borders of Israel. Why? Because the borders were created around the, where, where the kibbutzim were established in the, in the 20s. Because basically the last place of settling was where the, the border was created and, and they were, kibbutzniks were the first people to settle the, the, the desert, to sit uh, next to the Sea of Galilee on the eastern side to make sure that the water stays in the Israeli side and so on and so forth. Okay? So it's, it, what we see here is uh, it fits into this picture. Right, right, right. And then they get, do they get paid or they just send them everywhere? I mean, do you get, like, do you have to get the money for the resources to begin with, but then maybe... Okay, maybe this is a national money. enterprise. So resources, machines, a place, it's, it's been funded by the elected authorities, the Jewish agency, so on and so forth. Payment, they got, they got paid for that. It's not like, I mean, they need to live from something. If you work here all day uh, long, and half of the people in the kibbutz are working here, you won't have salaries, you won't have a way to feed them, right? So they needed, it's not like they became rich uh, because of that. But, um, but they did get paid, and I think it's, it's okay if you risk your life, at least having money to live, it's fair enough, I think. Um, okay, that's about that. But she's asking where yeah. did the money come from that they were paid? Who paid them? Okay, so... The government, didn't exist. The, the, the government didn't exist in a way because there wasn't a state, but the elected authorities already did exist. The, fir the first elections are during the, the 30s here. Oh. Okay? You, you're talking about a well organized nation already at the time. Uh, one of the, uh, as the last thing that I'll say here, because I, I talk too much here. Um, the, um, I'll tell you what. The, uh, the biggest lie of the Jewish uh, state existent is like, uh, it says, we had a, a holocaust and then we have a state. And that, the reason for having a state is, is, the, uh, is the holocaust and that's it. And that's the only reason. It means that the, everything starts um, after the war ends. And that's a, a very big lie. You already had, in the beginning of the 20s, in the 30s, during the 40s, already this nation is going through a process of arranging itself in, a, in, a, in authorities, in, in structures, in groups. But how do they collect the taxes? Didn't they need tax money? I mean, yeah. people had to be taxed to get the money. So, two ways. You had the, the, uh, the, the money for, from the um, from the blue boxes, people mm -hmm. that donate. Right. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, yeah. All yeah. around the world. And, yeah. and you have um, taxes that being paid in Israel. That are the, voluntar the first, I think, for voluntary, voluntary taxes I've ever heard of, ever. People voluntarily paid to be part of, of the, the, the community that was growing here, the, the society that was growing here. Okay? Right, can I just say one thing? Yeah. In the United States, because my family was involved in it, they collected money for Zionist causes, and most of it was for military. Because I remember I had two uncles. And they told you that that's what they wanted the money for, to bring over to Israel, send it there some way, so they could be doing this. And that was in the 30s. Maybe about that, uh, about that I'll say um, one last thing. Generally, when you want to create a national... So apparently there was a 
um, into the into the uh, storages and ship is going back, getting to Israel. A lot of soldiers are getting in this boat on this ship, finding finding nothing. Okay, a lot of disappointment, I guess. Uh, Forty-two, but four years later, there's a shared operation of a, a unit <coughs> of Haganah called Halmach and the British Army in Lebanon. So during this operation, they realized they have a chance to bring the boxes from Lebanon. So they sent uh, a few messages from the Haganah to find the British drivers. They send them, they, they give them a lot of money, pay those drivers for not asking questions. They take, take them to the storages, load the boxes in, on those uh, British Army tracks, drive to Tel Aviv, give them be beer, pay them a lot of money, take the boxes and send them, and that's it. And if you ask yourself how do, how do the machines get to Israel, with British soldiers and drive drivers, beer and a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the story. Yeah. Why not the, the, when this became public information, some of the British plan. A lot of smart people. A lot of smart people. And dedicated people as well. As brilliant. I think what we can learn out of it more than what he said. I think I accept what he said totally. But I think also, um, first of all, understanding that history was created and still is created by decisions that people decide. Because these people to decide to come here is a quite hard decision. They come here being 23, they already have three kids in the group. Parents that bring their kids here can tell their parents what they do. Um, working in a place like this for hours every day, six days a, uh, a week, for two and a half years is a hard decision. And by deciding those small or big decisions, depending on how you call it, they created our present. Because our present is their future. It means that our decisions today are going to affect very much the future that we're going to have. Or the present that other people are going to have not very, not, I mean, not in that far time from now. Um, and so if history is created by people, we have the chance to set goals, to, to say what kind of a, of a future we see as a good and just society, a good and just future for the Jews around the world, and, and let's do it. And as we said before, Zionism is, is not only an idea, it's more, more of a program, of, a, of, a, of deeds people do Zionism, they don't think Zionism. And for me, coming here, um, every time I come here, I feel like I'm invited, I'm invited to the Zionist movement. <laughs>
and take one for longer. Rachel, did you get one of these before? Okay, now we're going back up the stairs. Bye, Papa. I hope you like it. This is an oven. I think we moved. So bakery. That's a little boy. Where's the box? It's right at the bottom. No, Dad, he can't come in. Why? What is so secret? I'm, I'm misty over all of us. Oh, sure he was. Oh. Not with the bullets, with the gun. No, he wasn't involved with the bullets. He didn't even know about Did he? Oh. If I ever see him oh. again, because he's about 90 years old now, oh, okay. I'll ask him if he knew about the bullets. Well, I don't Does think he, he cared. His hands? job was to get the, the guns and let the uh, Israeli uh, the Haganan and Irgun get the bullets. Does, did, what's wait. the word for nuts again? Where's Asher? They're all coming. Okay. What's wrong? Nothing. What do you do? He loves the Jones Brothers and he knows all the lyrics too. We got the party. Yeah, but wait, say Gwendy look me in the eyes. You rock, Chelsea. Look me Cut a piece yeah. of it. It's very hard. Here, John, take a bite of that. Right from the oven. Oh, no, you can't taste it. Take a bite right from the oven. Uh -huh. 
Bye bye. Right out of the oven. Give it to Samantha. She said she's still hungry. Where's Brenda? She? You want some Delsa? You want some Anvil? He should have the dog. Oh, to go to the Mom, what do you have to do? Go to the bathroom. Mom, what do you have to do? Here you go, buddy. There is, but there's no salt. You have to walk down the flight of stairs. You do? Yeah. Renee, is one halfway? It's the bathroom interview. Hey, and Mom, how do you feel about walking down the flight of stairs? Renee, Renee, it's one halfway. Halfway up, right? No, Sam. One, Are you halfway. overdosing him? No, one is halfway. I don't read it. What are you doing? I did. This is no, one. Wait, no, wait, there's wait, a wait, line towards the bottom. Hey, everybody. Yeah, they should walk up a, up a flight of stairs. Yeah, she. And whoa. One toilet was too smelly. Hey. Wait, and the other one, someone was in, and the third one I waited for my granddaughter, who got a great idea, who was my daughter's child, and there was, and she made all over the toilet seat. Why would I don't do that? If I do it, I clean it. Mom, could you talk some more to the camera? I'd like you to see the Grandma Adele talk. It's Come on, well, she needs to put some mouth. food in her mouth. No, there is food in her mouth. Oh, she's, she's got a pleasure. Got a hey, hey, hey. I tell you what, though, she learned for the best because with Grandma Adele, it was bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving, baby. Ten minutes after she, she was going, she she was the best. Bobby was. Bobby was fine. Bobby's fine. Bobby, the food doesn't come out. It just swirls around. <laughs> Grandma Dell, you got a bob and weave. <laughs> you funny. See that on the left and the right? Oh my God. Constantly. <laughs> oh. oh. Did you do that, oh Samantha? What happened? It ain't a party till something spilled. Oh, we got dead life on camera. Something spilled. <laughs> what did he do? I don't know. The glass fell. I think it's the, the talit. The talit got stuck underneath the thing. We got up. Why didn't you go to the bathroom? Break the glass. The Why didn't you go to the bathroom? Or is that just the glass? I said, uh, ice. wait ice. till I explain That's what happened. Oh, and she said, I would have cleaned it up. I said, oh, wait. Let's go. The best was though when she left to go to the bathroom yesterday, this morning, and she came back and never went. That was classic. Yes. All right. So what time are we getting up tomorrow morning to take the pills to go to the bathroom to eat breakfast to be at the curb at nine o'clock? Cause Jordy's leaving you. He's ditching you. Four thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so you're unpacked. She's unpacked, so that's fine. It's time's up. Colin's got Spilky's time's up. Now she's going to the water. We tried the glass. We don't know. Like Come on, go, go, go. Take, um, take a napkin. Take a napkin and then try to absorb it. Wake yourself up. You wake up at 7 30 or 8 30. Come on, ready, go. They're all down there? Oh, we're looking for a restaurant. Yeah. They just had dinner. Listen, um,. Mom? I mean, you, you fucking stinking McDonald's everywhere. You did, Sorry. Uh, yeah. Everywhere in the whole...
Yeah. Rachel wants to move. She goes, can we move to Israel? I'm like, why? Because all the, we were in the McDonald's and all the boys are hot. She goes, oh, they're so Rachel hot. They're so Israeli hot. hot kids. Rachel wants and to move here pictures, now. we took pictures, but we actually I, said, I said to them, I was like, bye. <laughs> they were so hot. We had to move here. Yeah, we're moving here. We're moving here. Okay. <laughs> Very smart, Jeremy. Can I film? Huh? Okay, one minute, I need to say it. And finish the game club. And try to catch some places successfully, some places not so. I, I can't get a view. Oh, he's weird. And now you can okay. see the power plane on the left. Sheep coming with the coal. To the right, yeah. And then the coal goes straight to this place. What we're going to do with the coal, which is warm already, right? So first of all, we put it as a mattress on the chicken houses. I we use it also uh, to pave road, as foundation of road. Right? Look at the but Mediterranean Sea. It became as thing. economic problem. Not economics, uh, uh, an environment problem. Oh, here it is. Yeah, the one on The Mediterranean Sea. See you next time. Here in the Cesarea Coast. Hi. We're here in the Cesarea Coast. Beautiful Mediterranean Sea. Now we're heading over to the Coliseum. Wait, are we, we have to go to the bathroom. No, I don't Wait, I'm not? Here we go. Bathroom break. Just go and come back. Everybody can go to the bathroom. What? Like, do they? Uh, I'll tell us the story. I think all our questions will be answered. Guys, I'm staying, I brought you here to this place. First of all, to see original paper. Original. This is what's called what a mosaic. A mosaic. A mosaic. A mosaic, mosaic, mosaic we say. It's multi-color, okay. or one color, two colors, the third. This place, it's called Vamaturius. Roman call it Vamaturius. What do you mean, what do you mean with the name Calcium? Vamaturius? Say Ants. Again? No, if I say Theater. vomit. Ants, like gross. It no, no, vomit. Throw up. Throw up. Throw up. So this is the corridor, which is called Vamaturius. People go in or out. out. Vamaturius, right? Okay. It's, like it's Latin. Oh, it's Latin. Yeah, it's Latin. It's Latin word. If you look at that, you can see the arch. And now let me know which stone will be the most important stone. Oh, the ones in the middle. So what Wait. call it? The it's keystone. The right? keystone. The question is, how they put the stone over there? So it means, Basil. if you're going to build the arch, That's first line will be no problem. Second line will be no problem. The problem became uh, the third, because right now it's on an the angle. They, yeah. right? they used wood forms. I'm not even asking you. I oh. ask them. Oh. <laughs> they use a ladder. He's right. He's right. No. They like they form. A frame. Yeah. A wood frame. Yeah. Then put the stone on top. And then took the keystone, the one in the middle, and put it on the place. The keystone is angle stone, like that. Yeah. Make a pressure oh, so on okay. both sides. Okay. And you don't need the cement. Right? Caesarea. It remind you something, the name? Caesar. Yes. What? Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. Caesar. Not only, not Augustus only Jewish or no. Augustus. I know, the honest, doesn't Caesar. matter. Caesar. Caesarea. Caesar. It means it's built and dedicated to who? To a Caesar. 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 Caesar.
the first one who starts to build, known as the Sedanites. Who's the Sedanites today? Today they're known as the Lebanese, which is North Lebanon. Those Sedanites was the sailors. Right? They used a small boat, merchant from uh, Lebanon down through Israel coast. Israel coast is a straight line coast. There is almost no natural port on there, and continue all the way down to Egypt and back. In case there is a storm, they found some cliff, you know, rock which goes straight to the water, used as temporary. That's why they built this place and call it Stratton Tower. Stratton, it's on the name of one of the old God, Stratton. Then Herod the Great. Who is the Herod the Great? We're going to be on Masada. You're going to be in Jerusalem. You can Herod, Herod the Great, Herod the Great, his sons, Herod the Great, Herod the Great. Herod the Great was one of the biggest constructors in Israel. Did he have a say on Masada? Pardon? Yeah, that he was on Masada. Yes, yes. I'm he built a lot. Yeah? Okay. So he built a lot. Wait, he built a lot. He was also a very smart person. He was a businessman. Herod. Herod. And was he Jewish? He was a Jewish. He, his father was converted. King so when he born, he born as a Jew. Right? His uh, father converted. Pardon? His father converted. His, his father was Edomite, converted to the Judaism. Right? So when he born, he born as a Jew. So. His, his, his background was Edomite. So his mother was Jewish. His mother was his, also born a Jew. So no, also Edomite. There was a, well, she converted. There was a, the Edomite converted by force. Ah, the, the okay, the society did. Wait, so Herod came to uh, this place and decided to build it as a main port. But he's not a stupid one. He had a port already, which is Jaffa. Jaffa mentioned in the Bible centuries before Herod. Herod said, I'm going to build the deep water port for the Roman ship. And Roman ship was 400, 500 ton ship. Jaffa was a small port. And Jaffa used by the Jewish. He said, I'm going to build it for the foreigners. Okay? He came to this place to invest a lot of money and the main powers at the time. He built a wall, the, break, the water breaks. Water breaks, it's amazing. Even today, the marine archaeology astonished how he built it. He built two of them. One uh, under the water, one above the water, the one protects the foundation of the one which is above. Amazing things. So why he chose Caesarea and never Jaffa? Because Caesarea served the center of the country, north and south. It's in the middle. Right? Caesarea is in the middle, middle of Israel. Right. Now, he was very smart because during the winter, boat, or let's say ship, couldn't sail in the Mediterranean. It's too rough. It was too stormy. Too strong. So what is, what is that? It said the trade routes would be start when the spring would start between those places where the boat or the ship stuck. If they stuck on this place, the trade routes would be from here, Cyprus, Greeks, Rome. If they would be in Alexandria, Alexandria, Cyprus, Greeks, Rome, and back. So I'm going to keep the crew on this place. They need the food. They need the pot. They need to repair the ship. They need to prepare. They need a place to sleep. They pay. He was an economic person, this guy. Who was? Herod. Herod. Oh. King Herod. So he built a city. He built Caesarea and dedicated to the, uh, to the Caesar. But he built also some other places which called Caesarea. That's why this place called Caesarea Martima, which means on the beach. Caesarea on the coast. Caesarea of Sebastian. Colonia Prima Augusta uh, Caesarea. Different name, different places, different times. Herod died. This place turned on the head of the Romans, the Roman Catholic. This place was the capital of the Romans. The population of the people was around 50,000 people. Where's the agriculture periphery? Around 100,000 people, try to imagine. That's why they need to bring much more water. The water, which is a local spring, wasn't enough for them, so they brought water by aqueduct, miles and miles away. From the, mountain, from the mountains, right? From the mountains, yeah. from the base of the mountains. Um, well, I have a question. Yeah. Like, how did these big holes form like there? Wait, wait. Questions? Let me finish. The and, then, and then we continue. So this place actually was the beginning of the great revolt against the Romans. 66 AD, disagree between the local people and the Jewish community, which was at this place. Well, point is Pilate, the first guy, I mean, the guy which is mentioned a lot of the gospel, the one who condemned Jesus to death, and sent him to crucify him was the governor of Judea at the same time. What was his name? Judy? Judy? No. no. Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. Pontius okay. Pilate. And Pontius Pilate was right here in Caesarea. Why right in Caesarea, not in Jerusalem? Because it's much more comfortable than this place. <laughs> we have a Coca-Cola stand, we have a Bikini Girls, we have that. It's a good weather. Just remember that. A 
it's a good word. They are on top people that are very tough, they are very close, they are not friendly. Because it's cold, they close themselves. But you see, when people went to Jerusalem during the pilgrimage, you can find there are about 200,000 uh, people at Jerusalem. Worst the people which was around in Jerusalem, around 150,000. And when they are going to the three major regalim, which means the Jewish holidays at the temple area, and particularly when they are submit and suffer by others, it's like a pile of straw. You need one matches to start the revolt, right? To incitement people over there, it's very easy. So what Pontius Pilate did at the time that the Passover started in Jerusalem, he left Caesarea and moved up to Jerusalem. When he moved up to Jerusalem, who came to Jerusalem as a Jew, as a pilgrim? Jesus. Jesus. And those two guys met together. Accidentally, they met together. But this place was the capital of the Romans. Centuries and centuries after, in the fourth century, when the, the uh, Romans changed their own attitude, they became much more Christians. The Christianity was the center of the Christianity at this place. It was a library, it was academics. This was one of the flowering seasons. The city was, the city growing up much more than the Roman time. But in the seventh century, 636, the Arabs came to this place. The Arabs took, uh, took the city. Concentrated in one corner. Most of the city destroyed. The crusaders, when they came in the 1099, didn't touch the city. Move it. Move all the way out to Jerusalem. Took Jerusalem, established the first crusaders' kingdom. Then they returned to this place and destroyed it. Only around 1250, Louis, the, Louis V, the king of France, oh, I doesn't have a test. No, it's Did you? Yeah, about Louis XIV, 1515. Yeah, okay, so Louis, one of, the, one of those Louis, right, he came here and built the city of uh, uh, Caesarea Wall. And Caesarea Wall was a very small and unimportant because it tended to be as a military post, uh, post right, like a, a fortress. So that was a short time later, the 1960s, the Mamluks from Egypt came to this place. That there was the reason why we couldn't find any more crusaders, kick them away. This place destroyed, not let them the opportunity to use it again. Mamluk moved to the center of the, of the country, and this was, let's say, unforgettable. The forgettable uh, of this. At the 18th century, Jugoslavian, Bosnia, Muslims, so down on this place. They built their own village, they built their own mosque, and on the way you will see what's left from the village, which is today galleries and all. The mosque still uh, exists. In 1948, when we took and we took, uh, when we came back and took Caesarea, those left. We don't know where are they. Maybe uh, part of them we know they are at the West Bank. Part of them maybe turned back to Yugoslavia, and from that time, we we'll take care of Israel. And just to digress for a second, Israel, which used to be called Palestine, correct? Yes. Okay. What was it called before Palestine, when it was, I mean, ancient times? Was it Palestine? Israel. It was Israel. Israel. Who is Israel? Huh? Who is Israel? Who is it? Yeah. I don't know. Jacob. Jacob, okay. So the son of Abraham. Jacob came, the 12th tribe of Israel, they oh. called Jesus. Okay, right. It's a tribe. So Israel was Israel until it got taken over by very different people who kept changing the name. So really when the whole thing happened after the Holocaust, that's when, you know, the British, the Americans, whatever, decided to give Israel back because historically, we had been the Jewish people, I mean, it was the, it was the homeland for Israel. I mean, it was... Um, the birthplace of Israel. Well, the question, your first question was why they called it Palestine. Yeah, but and then who called it Palestine? It was the Palestinians when they no, were in control. The, the Romans tried to call it on the name of the Philistines. Who is the Philistines? The Remember Philistines. David and Goliath and the whole yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Samson and the Egyptians, right? Those are the Philistines. The Philistines was on Gaza Strip. They, they spun off the Egyptians. They are part of the Greeks. They came from the Greek the island. Philistines. The Philistines came from the Greek right. island. They are the first one who brought the iron weapons, the sword on this place. And the Roman couldn't pronounce well the F. So Palestine, Palestine tend to be Palestine. Interesting. And from that time, it's just started. And eat. that's why the people that live there became the Palestinians, not because... You can call me if you ask what is your nationality. Yeah. I can say to you, I'm a Palestinian, right? A Jew, Israeli citizen. Cause pal cause because it depends how you represent it. The guy who was uh, sitting behind the wheels, the driver, asked him, what is your nationality? He can answer you. I'm a Palestinian, Arabs, Muslims, 
but no nationality because he's not the Israeli citizen. Right? So this. Because uh, you can't be an Israeli citizen if you're a Palestinian. Oh, well, I have um, two questions. What is it? Um, what is? Why? Yeah. What are the? Because in time to time, a Bedouin shepherd would walk around on this place at the 13th, 14th century. They make a, a, a beam, they put a beam on this place and make a parasol, can stay in here temporarily. Oh, and what are those yellow things? Like? It's a cable, light, electricity. They, they, that's something we have. This is not a Roman electricity. Yeah, so th does this you, does this still function as a? Uh, yes, yes. Do you still have operas in here. Yeah, do you know that the Greeks one of the great singers? Maria Callas. Uh, not Maria Callas, known as Harris. Harris. Yes. Wow. Harris. I saw her here. She was here. I saw. Wow. I saw Aida. On the video wow. Please, you do it. Pass it out. Please. Lingo would be please, please, please. It's on. Oh. Well. It's on, buddy. We are here at. Be careful. Jeremy, I have your wall. Roman place. What is this? Okay, I'm going to ask the questions and then you give me the answer. Okay. Look at that. What is this? Is that, is that original? What do you say? Is that, is that our opinion? Is that original, that ground? Yes. Floor? So that's uh, terrazzo or marble or granite? I'm asking her questions. What is this? She said, what is this? Another opinion? Uh, a stage where they fight. I was There's that. no tape Palestine. left. Palestine. Right over there. It's Roman changing. You. Roman at the stage. And they put a wall over there, right? And the wall and the stage is part of the show. The semicircle, the orchestra, tend to be the place of the VIPs, generals, economics, ministers, the old wives and all. At the uh, seventh century, no. sorry, at the 14th century, AD, the Byzantine changed it to the war. So they make a show, a naked show on this wall. The church didn't like it much, and so time later on, they uh, they stopped the use. So this payment. If you see the green one, the green gray, not the not the, the limestone, the limestone we put it. The green gray over there is authentic from the Byzantine 14th century. Table. How many people can sit around? Three thousand. Four thousand. Now to sit here, it's impossible to watch the show right now because the sun is disturbing us. <coughs> so the show.